Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Sonic Lost World. Last time, we cleared the first half of Desert Ruins and encountered Zomom, another member of the Deadly Six, and today we'll be taking on Desert Ruins Zone 3. Or, Desert Ruins? I don't know what is real anymore! Yeah! This is happening! And I don't mean in the cool, ah, oh, yeah, this is happening kind of way. No, I mean, like, this is occurring in front of us. This completely out-of-place, sweet-themed stage in a desert world. Why? Well, I have a few theories. First of all, this isn't the first time a candy-themed stage has been inexplicably placed in a, uh, in, in a desert-themed world. Uh, the other example that I can think of is Layer Cake Desert in New Super Mario Bros. U. As far as how it got here, oh, and be, be careful here, by the way, when you're grabbing that red ring, because if you're holding the rum button, you can run up that wall accidentally. Also, as we jump over these giant Oreo cookies, we encounter these enemies. We encounter them earlier. They're called Antons. You want to make sure you kick them, because if you attempt to do a regular homing attack, they'll grab you and damage you. And go ahead and count the seconds in which this area is completely automated. All of this stuff, since I jumped into that initial cannon, is completely automated. I'm not touching the controller. I'm doing absolutely nothing. Even right here, not touching the controller. And I'm going to regain control now. I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. As far as um, level design, Desert Ruins is pretty bland, pretty boring. I mean, there's no cylindrical stages, there's no tubular stages, there aren't a lot of stages where the, the world spins around like the side-scrolling sections in Windy Hill Zone. I mean, Desert Ruin Zone 1 was really flat, in Zone 2 it was kind of fun, but you were still just going straight forward. This one, aesthetically, I mean, it's a little more eye-pleasing than a desert, but still, I mean, it's just a basic side-scrolling platforming stage. Um, and there's a good chunk of it that you're not even controlling. And I'll talk about Zone 4 when we get there. Meanwhile, thank you Aaron Weber for letting everybody who's never played Donkey Kong Country know about that secret. I, for one, found the first bonus area on Ropey Rampage years ago. Anyway, getting this last red ring can be a little- Ah, oh, crap, just like that. Getting this last red ring can be a little tricky. These truffles getting fired out of the cannon, which is actually kind of cool, by the way, they cannot hurt you when you're in ball form. So just stay in ball form. Don't do a double jump when you're in the line of fire of those truffles, or they will hurt you. But as long as you're in ball form, you can simply keep bouncing up them, and you'll be able to ascend fairly easily. Also, that last platform there gives you a good opportunity to do a high bounce attack onto the switch of the capsule, which lets you chain together a bunch of points, which may not seem all that important unless you're going after the missions. But if you are trying to complete all of the missions in the game, then let it be known that there is a mission that you'll eventually get to, which involves chaining together a bunch of points upon hitting a, a, a capsule. And that's an easy way to accomplish that mission. And all I can think of right now is how stale that bread must be to make that sandwich that stiff. Interestingly, this scene right here shows two things about Zomom. One, he's not that stupid because he does correct Sonic by saying that what he said was three words. Also, it shows that he doesn't just eat junk food because he's eating a sandwich. It's a big sandwich, but still sandwiches are healthy. And to me, that says that Zomom is more of a gourmand than a glutton. I like to think of him as an evil version of Quina from Final Fantasy IX. Anyway, here we are in Zone 4 of Desert Ruins. And it's an auto-scrolling stage in a Sonic game. I didn't like it in the Game Gear version of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog with Bridge Zone. I don't like it here. I mean, when you have a when, when you have a game where the main concept is speed as a reward, and you strip away any ability to receive that award, that reward, yeah, no, I don't like it. There's no point in having an auto scrolling stage in a Sonic game. I do like that there's the tornado chasing you, which gives you kind of a sense of urgency but you should be able to outrun that tornado. If you do run towards the end of the stage, 
or, uh, towards the end of the screen, then, you know, you're stuck. It doesn't scroll faster to accommodate for you moving faster. I mean, what's the point of having something chase me if I can't get away from it? If the game is programmed to not let me get away from it? Anyway, this is the Yellow Drill. We met this guy before in Sonic Colors. It makes its return here, and you can control him either with the analog stick, thanks to the patch, and you can speed him up by, um, by holding down the ZR button. Or you can use the stylus on the touch screen and guide him where to go, and the further away from the drill that you uh, actually touch on the touch screen, the faster it goes. Um, this, is, this is another one where I prefer to use the, um, the touch screen mechanics. I just find the yellow drill a bit too unwieldy with an analog stick, but that's just me. I guess, thanks to the patch, you know, people can choose. And you know what? I just realized that I got extremely sidetracked back in Zone 3. I was going to talk about how I think a candy-themed world might have gotten there, because I have a few theories. One, Dr. Eggman built it for Zomom. Um, yeah, I don't know why he would do that. Eggman seems like a, you know, like a magnanimous kind of guy. I, I think, you know, even though he subjugated the Deadly Six, he might want to make uh, their slavery, quote-unquote, comfortable? I mean, he did make Zomom that sandwich. And in Sonic Unleashed, he made a sandwich for Professor Pickle. It wasn't the greatest. It should have had cucumbers, sliced thinly, if you please. So if you think of each world as a different domain for a member of the Deadly Six, Desert Ruins being Zomom's domain, it makes sense that there would be a food-themed area dotted somewhere in there. Either that or the place occurs naturally somehow, and uh, Zomom just took it over, or he managed to gather and make a bunch of giant food and just built the place for himself. Or, Sonic Team was smoking pot and had a huge case of the munchies when they were developing this game. Because Dimps did not put a candy-themed stage in the 3DS version. It's exclusive to Wii U. And, and PC at this point. Anyway, here we are on the second phase of the second fight with Zomom. And it's already over. Yeah, look at that. I get so sidetracked talking about other stuff that I don't even discuss boss strategy because, really, you saw what I did. Monkey see, monkey do. Just copy what I do if you want a strategy because the bosses are such a pushover that you don't really need to talk about them. It kind of bugs me how he calls them mechs. I mean... To me, mechs is, are something that you would drive, not not just a not just an autonomous robot. I'm a compassionate man. That shell looks like trouble. Okay, so Sonic and Tails are having their little conversation right now, so you don't hear the Eggman is still talking in the background. What he's saying is something along the lines of, I'm a compassionate man. If I wasn't, I'd have pushed you all into a bottomless pit right now. I probably didn't say that verbatim, but it's somewhere along those lines. Seriously, though, what's with them drowning out some of Eggman's lines with, you know, other character dialogue or background music or sound effects? I mean, that wasn't that great of a line, but they did it throughout Sonic Colors. Those PA announcements in Sonic Colors were comedy gold for Mike Pollock, and they drown it all out. I mean, I guess it's not as bad as blasting music over cutscene dialogue like they did in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. God, it was so bad in those games. Want a good example? Knuckles' first cutscene in Sonic Adventure 2. Because Scott Dreer talks really quiet and you can't hear anything, you probably have to turn up the volume on your speakers in order to hear what I'm saying right now. And you're all like, I can't hear you! <laughs> I'm sorry, headphone users. Seriously, though, the, the sound mixing in the Sonic Adventure game sucked. And Eggman's really fast to keep up with Sonic, isn't he? Just like at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Anyway, if you guys need new headphones because I blew yours out on accident, I can highly recommend the Super Awesome Kraken Forged Edition from Razer.
No, they're not sponsoring me. Razor, give me money. I want your money. Support my habits. What do you mean you don't need the endorsement of a nobody let's player from the darkest boonies of YouTube? What do you mean come back down to reality? What do you mean wrap this up because it's almost time for my daily dose of Seroquel? Anyway, go figure another plan of Dr. Eggman's backfires in his face and now he's a man on the run! And he's running with us to Tropical Coast. But that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching That LP Show and have a one that is good.